The topic is the case for RUP, but uh, I believe that if something is working, we shouldn't uh, mess with it. So, uh, because I believe in that, then uh, I have to convince myself and you that there is something that needs to be changed. Otherwise, we are having a happy, beautiful life in beautiful British Columbia. So, uh, the first part of the talk is to identify the problems of first past the post, uh, which is the current system, and what is first past the post. And then, once we identify the specific problems, then we can identify which one of the proposed systems can solve those uh, problems, and that is how we decide which one of them is the best. If we don't identify the problem, if there is no problem, or we don't identify the problems, then how can we choose which one of these systems we have to move to, okay? So let's start with the idea of democracy. So democracy is the rule of majority, and most people believe that the rule of the majority means more than 51% of the vote is majority. However, the word majority has confusion in it. Sometimes it is used when it is, in fact, a plurality or relative majority. Uh, but anyway, democracy means that those who have majority, they should rule. But uh, by, um, you know, 19th uh, century, people, you know, the, the revolution in the United States happened in uh, 18th century, and then the French Revolution and a number of other democratic revolutions happened. But then people started to realize that just having the majority rule is not enough. Um, for example, uh, John Stuart Mill uh, thought that uh, what if the majority of the people decide to kill the, all of the uh, minority? Like they, they very democratically set uh, an assembly and vote and democratically decide that all of the other who are minority, they shouldn't talk. So he identified the, the limitations of majority rule and he called it the tyranny of majority. Um, the, if they have absolute majority, they still cannot limit uh, the personal freedoms, freedom of the speech and other things. Um, read on liberty, it is very short and it is very informative by uh, John Stone. The result is a move toward what is called liberal democracy and this liberal democracy, for those of you who are uh, conservative or liberal, shouldn't make you happy and those who are NDP shouldn't make you unhappy. This is not the Liberal Party. This just means that it is democratic uh, system with the condition that the majority cannot limit the liberties of minorities. Later it has, you know, in the United States has the, you know, liberal means uh, someone who has more progressive ideas. Or on, uh, this topic, on 2007, I had a, a presentation in um, United Kingdom, uh, which I uh, basically focused on a very, um, you know, worse thing than the tyranny of majority, which is the tyranny of weak majority. And weak majority is relative majority. What if um, you know, like in, in the way that the most, a number of voting systems in the world work, what if 40% of people come to power? Uh, and they take all of the power in the legislative assembly. That would be something that I don't, I'm not sure if uh, John Stuart Mill would imagine at the time or not, but um, you will see that it can happen. I want you with show of hand, tell me, is it possible in Canada that one vote, one party get 100% of the seats in the parliament? Is it possible? Yes. Okay. So you know the answer, of course. <laughs> um, so, uh, so a lot of you are silent or, sus you know, um, but today I will show you that it is quite possible and also from theoretical point of view and I will also show you that we have been close to this happening in the life of the past 30 years of politics in Canada uh, multiple times. Okay, anyway, that, so I started to think about this issue um, um, since 2007 and basically my patent and stuff happened after that. 
So uh, what is the story? The story is that um, first past the post system was a system that people in 18th century decided that it is good for the time. Uh, you know, if you are living in 1777 and you want to ask people to vote, then you have to put the ballot box on the back of a horse and let it ride to another state and come back after a couple of days. And uh, there is no computer, no calculator, not even mechanical calculator. Uh, so you have to keep it simple. So there is a system that came out and said that anyone uh, to the credit of people that at the time did it, they chose, they, they did something that after two, 200 years we are still stick with it. Um, uh, but uh, for the time it was revolutionary. That was the reason that it was called revolution in the United States. Um, this thinking that uh, everybody's opinion can even be technically collected was a revolutionary idea. And this method, uh, which is called the relative majority plurality first past the post. Uh, this works very well if you have two uh, two alternatives. Okay? And if you don't have two alternatives, then um, it will cause a problem. So look at this. Here we have uh, three alternatives, and uh, we want to buy something. And now uh, with the uh, you know, if you use first part. So first of all, uh, what do you think we should buy? Okay, there is a party. We have one choice to buy something. Um, uh, you know, these many people like uh, to eat orange. These people like ta tangerine, and these people like banana. Okay, what should we buy? Like using the terminology of John Stuart Mill to maximize the utility which is basically the pleasure of most people. Banana. 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 Oh, banana uh, like these people, I think they like something orange. <laughs> yes. And banana is, those who like banana, they like more energy. Um, and they're different, okay? And basically, this system, the first past the post system, um, which one will, the, will be elected under first past the post system? Banana. Banana, Banana. okay? And then those people who wanted to uh, uh, have orange or tangerine, they have to go with banana. And actually, we cannot ever prove if banana is the best choice or which one of them is the best choice. Because in first past the post system from information theory, we have missing information. We don't know if the second choice of the people who liked orange is tangerine or, or not, okay? But of course, all of you speculated that the second choice of these people would be this and the second choice of these people will be this. Uh, However, we didn't ask them, and everything we say about the true nature of the feelings of these people is based on a speculation. We didn't ask them, so we don't know, actually. So the solution is very simple, and the, the solution is that we, can, uh, we simply have to um, ask them uh, their choices. So this is a, a more realistic example that can happen in any society. This is a society in which uh, there is a strong majority of people who want to decrease taxes. And there is a minority of people that want to increase taxes. They want to increase taxes and do something with it. Okay? Um, and uh, um, basically any voting system that you choose, any, will lead to decreased taxes party as a candidate to be elected. We have two alternatives. We want to make one choice. First past the post works very well. Now we introduce, you know, somebody comes and says, we have to decrease tax for businesses because government needs money. How can we decrease tax for everyone? And then there are people who say that uh, we have to decrease tax for everyone. 
So still the people who make the, you know, they like to decrease the taxes, they are still the majority. But they have this, this difference in opinion that should we decrease the tax for, uh, for everyone or for only for companies? What would be the choice of these people if we use first past the post? Increase taxes, okay? So now it's not that ambiguous. So um, you can think that uh, definitely it's not as ambiguous as the, as the tangerine and orange. Uh, this, is the, the, this is not maximizing the utility of most people. A uh, huge majority of people uh, are interested in decreasing tax. But what will happen is that their representative who believes in increased tax and, and belongs to a party that wants to increase tax will go to the parliament. There are two major problems with this first past the post system. And then these two, two major problems are important to be recognized because then later we want to use them as a criteria to choose the, the best alternative out of the, the ones that are proposed uh, in, the, in this referendum. The first problem is that at the local level, in this specific city, people are interested that someone who represents their ideas to go to the, uh, to the legislative assembly. Okay? And first past the post doesn't satisfy that. The, the technical reason for that is that from here to here, what happened is that uh, an idea which was similar to one of the alternatives was proposed and that causes what is called vote splitting or a spoiler effect, okay? And then in the United States, this happens every 10 years. Like they say, oh, Ralph Nader shouldn't be a candidate because if he's a candidate, then Democrats will vote for Ralph Nader and he is a spoiler. And then 10 years before that, they say um, Ross Pro uh, shouldn't be. A so uh, these two major problems that see theoretically and empirically exist in first past the post has led to unstable governments contrary to the myth that um, if we switch from first past the post the government will be unstable look at the stability of the current formation of the government if the NDP doesn't do one thing that uh, Greens don't like the government will collapse and this is not as the result of NDP coming to power, by the way. It's the result of liberals being in power, not changing the system. So is it a stable government? No. Now look at this. In 1993, first past the post in Canada, liberals got power with 41% of the vote. They got 60% of the seat, and it's called majority government, not because you know, the other thing that you have to notice, when you say there is a majority government, it doesn't mean that the majority of people want it. It means that the majority of seats are there. So in the history of the past 20 years in British Columbia, it was only once that the majority of people wanted what happened. So 1993, 41% of the vote got 60% of the seats. The result is an unstable minority liberal government which has 100% of the power. Then the Canadian Alliance, uh, which was the Reform Party before, and progressive conservative parties, they created a new party, the coalition that we mentioned. So the conservative party came, uh, you know, was created, and then uh, they formed a conservative minority government. And uh, so in 2006, we got a, con uh, so basically this was, uh, I guess, Paul Martin, minority government, and it lasted two years and two months. Then we had uh, Stephen Harper, the leader of the coalition, got to power. Uh, then another election in 2008, another minority government. Notice that these are the blue ones, and they don't have more than 50%. Therefore, they had to form a minority government. And for those of you who don't know, a minority government is a government that is ha in a situation in 2006, the formation of the minority conservative government, 36% of people got the majority of seats, uh, not, not the, the relative majority, 
and they had to form the government. So this, this is the most unstable situation that can happen. They neither have the relative, they, they neither have the majority in terms of people, nor have the majority in the uh, majority of the seats in the parliament. Then we have another unstable minority government uh, in 2008. And then uh, we have the first shutdown of the parliament by the prime minister in 2008. Then we have the second shutdown of the parliament by the prime minister. Then we have the third shutdown of the parliament. And in that stable first past the post system, people went to the streets to protest very stably. And then, uh, then we have in 2011, the unstable minority government collapsed with a no confidence vote in the parliament, and there was another election, and in this one, the conservatives with 39% of the vote, just two more percent increase from what had in the past, they got 54% of the seats, and they formed a the minority of people formed a majority government in the parliament. Uh, and then again, I, I don't really remember exactly why, at the majority situation, still he tried to <laughs> close the parliament, and uh, then there was another election, this time, uh, again, the, notice that if you have 39% of the vote, and your competitor has 38% of the vote, of course, you know, the next election, this is 50-50 chance that the government will collapse. That's the reason that you know, now the liberals with 39% of the vote got the majority, 54% in the parliament, and formed a majority, but it's called the majority government, because the majority of seats are there. Now, solution. You already know the solution. The problem was that we didn't ask people what is their second and third and fourth choices. The solution is that to solve this information bug, so we ask from everyone, what is your second choice? And most probably about the decrease of taxes. If you ask these people who want decreased tax for businesses, their second choice is just the decrease tax for everyone. And those who think that the taxes, um, because they know that if you decrease the taxes, then education will not be free. Blah, blah, blah. So basically, if you think that you decrease the taxes for everyone, then their second choice would be decrease the taxes for, for businesses. And these people, uh, their second choice would be, uh, you know, the less tax or whatever it is. Now, if we if we ask the people their second choices, the method of asking or the ballots that you saw at the beginning of today's presentation is called preferential voting ballot. Okay, so and that's the reason that we thought that you can, without worry, express your feelings about your preferences. We didn't talk about how we are going to vote these things. How we vote a preferential ballot is a different thing. But if we collect what are your preferences, we actually we don't have missing information. Good. So this is obvious that this switch solves the fundamental information problem in the system. Now the question is that how do we, uh, you know, basically count this? Um, the in, you know, if you think about the parties in Canada, I think all of them, they do this. They ask their people, you know, the members of the party first preferences, and then they check the one that has the least popularity, they drop it, they go to the next one. But because they, they usually are voting in a, like in a stadium or a hall, uh, all of the people are attending, they do multiple rounds of voting. Okay? It's called runoff voting. Uh, basically, instead of asking at once, like what we did, tell us all of your 16 preferences, they ask the first preference, then they ask the second preference, they ask the third preference, and so forth. Um, it's called runoff voting. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, multiple rounds. We can ask you, as we did, what are your preferences, and then, uh, fortunately, it is not 1777, and the uh, computers can do the job. Now, we ask the people, what are their preferences? They give us all of their, the first choice, second choice, and so forth, and now we want to vote. The most common way, um, if we want not to go through, you know, the fact that political parties are all doing runoff voting means that this is the best system. 
Because when it is about the internal affair of the party, you are not going to leave it to the chaos of first mass of Okay? Um, so that's, that's one. So if you just go home and think about it, whatever parties for do for themselves is probably the best. However, we cannot do uh, that in the, in the whole society. We cannot go through multiple rounds of voting. Instead, we can ask them, what are your preferences? And what we do is that whatever choice has the least chance of being elected will be dropped. So we go to in a, you know, if it was in a, you know, party meeting, we would say, okay, look, dear green people, uh, you will never be the choice. You have the least preferred, you're the least preferred option. So uh, you have an option to insist, uh, and then the blues will go to power, or you can drop your green choice and think about, you know, give you the chance to exercise your voting power um, and we will look at your second choice. And any rational person would say, okay, look at my second choice, don't drop my ballot into the garbage can. And this will result to this. So basically we remove the green from the domain of possibilities. Why we remove the green from the domain of possibilities? Because they didn't have any chance to be elected anyway. Okay. Now, nobody's vote is in the garbage. Now we ask, look at the second choice of these people, and that reveals the fact that most people like the decrease in the tax. And in this case, a candidate from the uh, decreased taxes for every one party will go to the parliament. Um, however, uh, there is, it is not still ideal. Uh, this, uh, uh, what we did is called instant runoff voting. Basically, the system automatically drops the least wanted choice, and uh, or it is called a single transferable vote in a, for a single candidate. Okay, it has a problem. But if we wanted, now if we switch for the elections of any area from first past the post to instant runoff voting, that's an improvement. At least the the person who goes to the uh, to the parliament would be the representative of the ideas of the majority. So, okay, this yellow person will go to the parliament. However, it doesn't solve the problem of the blue people. But look at the blue people. Blue people, yes, they are minority. They want to increase tax, but they are minority. But they are not represented in the parliament. So they feel that they have no voice. So, yeah, it is better. The, the person who is in the parliament talks about what most people want, but this doesn't solve the problem. If we just convert a jurisdiction's voting system, the final solution happens if we combine the areas. So some of you may think why they are combining the areas. There is a reason for that. Because when we combine the areas, something beautiful happens with single transferable votes, which the, the exact name for it is multi-member single transferable vote. And unfortunately, they didn't mention and differentiate it in the voting you know, literature that they distributed in their society. Most people, don't, they don't see the difference. And I've seen people are confused about this. If we combine a bunch of areas, let's say you combine six areas to one electoral district, and then we decide to elect people, and let's say what is happening in British Columbia, actually they are also increasing a little bit, about 10% the total number of members of the parliament. So we have six jurisdictions combined, and we are going to send seven people to the parliament. Then something beautiful happens. Uh, the the parties that have a majority, in fact, those who want to decrease the tax, if you look at here, we have 37 people who want to increase the tax, and how many people want to? 53. 53. So most people want to decrease the tax, but 37 people want to increase the tax. If it was just, if we apply single transferable vote or instant runoff voting per jurisdiction, not switching to 
multi-member um, um, single transferable vote. Let's see what happens. Who goes to the parliament here? Decrease, just, just make a, like, we, will re we will remove their first choice, we will go to their second choice, but the person who goes from this place would be decrease. decrease. Here, two, four, five, eight. So here would be the blue, here will be uh, decrease, there will be decrease, decrease, and decrease. So if we just apply a single transferable vote in single jurisdictions, it doesn't solve the, the, the proportionality. Still, out of these six areas, only one member will be voting for uh, increase. increase the taxes. Um, so, but if we go with multi-member STD, which is basically what is in the ballot, the simplest way that you can understand is this. Uh, there is a quota that is automatically calculated based on a formula. And the formula is basically if we want to select seven candidates, we divide it by eight, we divide the number of uh, voters by eight. If we want to choose six candidates, we divide by seven. If we want to choose two candidates, we divide by three. Plus one. This is a very simple formula. So in this case, the quota is 12. That means that if you want to send someone to the parliament, you have to have 12 votes. For every 12 votes that you have, you can send one person representing two to the parliament. That's it. So how many people the blue people can send? They have 37 votes. Three people. So they can spend their 12 votes and three people from this group will go to the parliament. This group has 29 votes. How many people they can send? Two people, and they have extra five votes that cannot send anyone to the parliament. And these 24 people who are green, they can send two people to the parliament. Now, is proportionality there? Yeah, most people are, they, most people want decreasing taxes. Most people in the parliament want to decrease the taxes. The vote is a split between decreasing the tax for the companies or for all people. That is represented in the parliament. And there are people who want to increase the taxes and their voice will be heard. But they are minority, as they are in the society. And these people will form a coalition government, for sure. Is this coalition government stable? It is very stable. Because if this vote of these people, you know, if one of them convinces the other one that we have to decrease the taxes for everyone, not just for corporations, they are still the coalition government. It would need a huge shift in the public opinion to, to make this coalition government unstable, if it is formed like this. So this is the, the solution. And uh, most of the countries that were um, colonies of the United Kingdom, Great Britain, and uh, uh, were using first past the post, they have moved to some form of uh, basically first preferential voting system, which asks all of your ranking, and then to various forms of single transferable vote. So if you notice in in the close to England, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scotland, they have all moved to the system. Uh, many types of uh, elections in Australia is happening in this system, a single transferable vote. Uh, in New Zealand too, in, even in the United States, uh, there are experiments. Um, but, um, uh, Basically, if we consider Canada very similar to New Zealand and Australia, we are behind. Uh, 